what is SLAM? SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. And it is the task of estimating a map of the environment and at the same time localizing your sensor or your robot in that map that you're currently building. Um, and it's something that mobile robots need whenever they move into unknown or partially unknown environments because they need to build a map of the environment and localize itself within that map. If a map is given, then things are much easier. You just need to localize yourself. And if a pose estimate is given, then mapping is also relatively easy. Um, but solving both problems together is much harder. And it's um, something that has been investigated in robotics since, let's say, the beginning of the uh, 1990s. Um, and we typically uh, find different approaches uh, in order to solve the SLAM problem. Um, we have to distinguish here between the front end and the back end. So the front end is a part which takes the raw sensor data and turns them into an immediate representation, such as constraints in an optimization problem or probability distribution about the location of, let's say, a landmark um, derived from sensor data. So transferring sensor data into an intermediate representation. That's very task specific. And then the second part of the back end, which takes this intermediate representation and solves the underlying state estimation or optimization problem. So estimating parameters that describe me, for example, where objects are in the environment or where my platform is in the world. And um, in this back end, we typically find, let's say, three different categories of approaches. The first one are the extended Kalman filters. This is how it started, at least in robotics. Uh, the alternative is particle filters or least squares or so-called graph-based SLAM approaches. And those graph-based SLAM approaches are today the most popular ones. So if you build a new SLAM system, you would most likely start with a graph-based approach. In those graph-based approaches, we, as the name says, use a graph to represent the um, variables and the relations between those variables. And the different types of graphs which are out there the two most popular ones today are either a post graph, which is a graph that contains only the poses and marginalizes out the map information, um, or factor graphs, which um, have factors sitting in between nodes, in between variables, and the information coming from the front end or from other sources, um, prior information can be stored in those factors. And they are both kind of similar, what you can do with it, and different optimization toolboxes use in different internal representations. Um, how to solve this least squares problem? This is typically done using optimization techniques, um, and there's a large variety of parameters or options that you can choose. There are also toolboxes out there that you can use. The three most popular ones for the backend are probably G2O, um, GTSAM, and Ceres, which are kind of three systems which help you to solve your optimization problem. And these are the most popular ones today. Um, they either use factor graphs or they use a form of SLAM graphs or post graphs as a special form of, uh, of these graphs. So in post graphs, for example, every node represents the pose of the sensor at a certain point of time. And the edges between those nodes, nodes represent the spatial relations that are extracted from that sensor data. And then the optimization system basically tries to find a new configuration of the nodes so that the overall error that is introduced through the edges actually gets minimized until I find the minimum error configuration, which is my least square solution. And again, this is um, a technique that is used whenever you need to build a map of the environment and localize yourself within that map. So something that mobile robots need to do, autonomous cars need to do, UAVs need to do. Um, so every system which moves through the environment, potentially if it does it on its own. There's also strong links between um, visual slam and bundle adjustment. Uh, so bundle adjustment has been there for much longer. So in the 1950s, uh, people from photogrammetry developed bundle adjustment. And you can see this as a special form of visual slam, which has a special form of constraint that is basically the reprojection error of pixel coordinates. Um, but there are very strong similarities between those approaches. Um, the SLAM formulation is typically somewhat more general, but basically came, let's say, 30 to 40 years after this has been developed in photogrammetry.